Welcome back to Hour 3 of the Nutramedical Report, one of the most popular hours of the week with our guests who are also in their own show, John Moore and Ann Morrison, 6 to 7 a.m. Central Standard Time, Monday to Friday on Republic Radio. Uh, John's site, of course, is thelibertyman.com and Ann's homeland hyphen defense for you.com. John, you've been a uh, forensic investigator for years. You're former special forces. You're a prepper consultant. So when I tell people they want to have a consultant, how to prep them, whether they're getting a container for the Cook Islands or they're just trying to get themselves ready, uh, we've collaborated on trying to do a list called the 10-plus list, which is over in our preparedness. We're always kind of revising and updating it. The uh, You have contacts inside and outside the government. What's the latest uh, buzz happening, and what kind of warnings are they giving us? Well, so thank you, sir. And as always, good to be here. Uh, well, the latest buzz is, is still a, a great focus on three matters. Uh, EMP just keeps coming up over and over again, the likelihood of either a regional or a nationwide EMP attack. Uh, next would be the flu pandemic, and there's no way to look at this other than it being uh, biological weapons. And last yeah. but not least, cyber, cyber attack. And, of course, cyber attack and EMP go uh, hand in glove together. Uh, one would certainly lead to the other. Um, and uh, the month of November keeps popping up uh, both from uh, my private sources and uh, little tidbits we get here and there, such as the conversation between the, the three Russian males in the bar last week where they were laughing and joking and making fun of the stupid, dumb Americans, uh, being overheard by a stupid, dumb American who could speak Russian, by the way, and <laughs> and then saying toward the end of their conversation that all the stupid, dumb Americans would find out just how stupid they were on November the 7th without saying what would happen, if anything, on November 7th. So right. that's what we're hearing, and, and uh, the reports continue to be uh, multiple from uh, sources that don't know each other from different parts of the country, which gives everything a, a, an incredible amount of credibility. Now, there's a couple of things that are happening behind the scenes. People uh, sometimes have the delusion that they've solved the financial problem with the so-called closure of the 16-day shutdown and uh, the other issues. The sequester hasn't been dealt with. The real debt issue, in fact, the debt I saw jumped something like $338 billion in one day. Uh, the dollar is slipping. This is today's report from World Stock Markets from the Wall Street Journal. The dollar is slipping as compared as the Fed worries continue. This problem is not solved. In fact, if anything, people are going to presume the Democrats are delusional enough to, consider, to presume that, quote, they've won. They've won nothing. Neither of the Republicans won anything. In fact, the policy they had to shut down the government is like deciding not to pay your bills by not going to work. Um, the fact is that we have the sequester coming. The real issue is both parties are basically fascist, and they want to do a, a sturdy fascism. I use the analogy of two wolves deciding with a pen of sheep uh, which recipe cards they're going to use, and they try to calm the sheep down by telling them, don't worry, we're going to figure out which recipe is best for dinner. And uh, <laughs> I like that. Yeah, yeah I, I really think that people don't understand that this is this is a dance. This is a game. It's as Jack Nicholson would say in, in The Shining. This is a dance with the devil in the in, in the moonlight. Um, you know, uh, we, we, John. When we see this, we know that the Treasury uh, they've been able to quote say that they've extended the charter, but actually the Fed Reserve is coming to an end, and it's coming to an end because they want to mutate into a new global world biometric world currency system will trap China and Russia. <laughs> Any comments you know, in this area? Well, I would think, Dr. Bill, with the complexity of getting legislation passed through Congress, that if they were going to uh, introduce legislation to uh, renew the uh, uh, Federal Reserve and give it a new charter, for another hundred years, that, that legislation would be drafted, would be introduced, it would have sponsors, uh, because we're looking at what uh, less than three months before the charter expires. Yeah, and apparently uh, they said this happened many years ago, but I find no evidence that they even have the legal right to extend a charter. A charter cannot be extended without a full congressional vote. You can't just sneak it in, and you can't attach right. it as an attachment bill. So uh, what we have is a charter to a foreign corporation which in its very nature is illegal. You can't have a, a, you know, in other words, Congress can't pass over its its responsibility or rights to a foreign corporation, the Fed Reserve, like they did 100 years ago, which means this game is over. 
they and they know that that's why they're taking us trying to take us to war with Syria. Now they're saying that any moment Israel could go and attack Iran. That's only because Obama gave tanker bombers and all kinds of other equipment basically gratis, billions of dollars, so the crazy Israelis could do a preemptive strike on Iran and start World War III. Their main engine for global control when they can't get cooperation from the political parties is to take us to war, and in wartime, virtually anything goes, including totalitarianism. So Obama uh, is just itching to do something catastrophic, whether it's the Hajj virus coming back, because the Hajj is over yesterday, whether it's H7N9, where there's a power blackout with the cover of ISON saying it's going to occur right at the time when it crosses the orbit of mercury and causes a coronal mass ejection. Uh, when you hear these kind of comments, it, you know, as Professor McKinney says, this has all the smell of a false flag coming like 9-11. Absolutely. Well, you're right, Dr. Bill. Uh, I recall, of course, I wasn't alive and neither was you. The temporary emergency measure of taking money from people's paychecks, uh, we now call it withholding, uh, during World War II. Uh, well, obviously right. the temporary emergency World War II is over, but taking the money from our paychecks every week has continued and will continue at F and item. So, <laughs> you're Did, right. John, uh, people, I don't know if you heard this, but uh, we 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 talked about this. I want to get your opinion on it. We talked about this, uh, John and Ann, with uh, Harley Schlanger that in Europe they're discussing the idea of tastes of Cypriot policy, a uh, bailing of taking 17 to 30 percent of everybody's assets, including the equity in their home. Their pension funds, their bank accounts, even their gold and silver coins or private property, and bailing it into the banks. Uh, this is a, and it's not just a one time deal. They say it's one time, but it's like a vampire that says, I will not return. This is the only time I will take your blood. Well, that's not going to happen. The next week, on a, or the next full moon, the vampire is going to come back wanting more blood. So, that's right. Uh, this idea that somehow, you know, just like the bail ins and the bailouts of the too big to jail banks, uh, I don't buy it, and, and the fact that they pushed it past Christmas just uh, means they don't have all of their ducks lined up to do what they want to do to us, and they do want to do things like chaos of a CME. They do want to see an airborne plague, because that's the, I've been saying this at the top of the list, an airborne plague like the Hodge coronavirus or H7N9 is the ideal, because you'll get cooperation from the public. You can't have martial law unless the public feels in danger that's right. and out of fear right. passes their authority to a bunch of maniacs. That's right, uh, and I've been saying that for years, Dr. Bill, that, that whatever the, the uh, precipitating event for martial law is, <clears throat> it will have to, it'll have to be both real enough and scary enough that people will go along with it. Otherwise, right. it will fail. Otherwise, right, and of course, fail. the reason if they were just uh, to declare martial law tomorrow and start shooting at people, those officers, whether they speak with a Russian accent and they've been embedded as sleeper agents in America or their DHS, whatever, with their hollow point bullets, they won't have many heartbeats left on this earth before they're going to meet Jesus. Uh, it doesn't matter. You know, as I say, the joke is, what do you say 300,000 Chinese troops with 1,700 armored personnel carriers and tanks coming across the border from through San Diego or through Texas into America? I call them takeout. Uh, no targets, it's a, it's a, yeah, they're targets, okay? The fact is, we as Americans will take them out very fit quickly. And the problem is this government are terrified of an armed public, and they've done everything they can in the first and second term of Obama to disarm the public, and all they've done is actually increase gun sales and bullet manufacturing. The public are totally aware now this is not a theory, this is not a drill. These maniacs are absolutely going to do something bad, because when they go for your guns, they're going for you next. Absolutely. Well, Doctor, you know, I'm the commander of my local American Legion post, and we have men uh, who are Korean War veterans out there uh, chucking uh, hay bales and driving tractors and trucks every day of the week. Healthy, vigorous men, well into their 80s, uh, by means of saying uh, most veterans, regardless of their age, still pose a clear and present danger of any threat to this country. Exactly. Plus, they can also train the young man in a matter of two weeks. Those young guys will be snapping to attention and learning all the main core activities they need to do very quickly when it's life and death. And 
we're still trying to get a hold of Professor McCanny, but um, you can go to jmccsci.com, and you've got an important report on Fukushima. I did an update last night, too, on the Rents Network on Hour 2. I'm on there every Thursday, the second Thursday of the month. I'm on Hour 3, not 2. And what's your update on Fukushima? Because this is a growing catastrophe, isn't it? This is a growing catastrophe. We have a, we have a biologist who's actually gone out and looked at the uh, at the anecdotal reports in, uh, about salmon, and they have different types of salmon. Uh, we probably know Chinook and Coho, and but uh, yeah. the, but it, it, the easy uh, classification is pink and red. And what they're finding is that uh, they. They're turning yellow. They're, they're no longer uh, pink or red. The, the the flesh is yellow. The eyes are yellow. Um, the eyes are popping out, and they're not uh, they're not breeding. And um, so, um, and they're not just little yellow. They're deep canary yellow. Parts of their hearts are yellow. Their gill arches and spines are yellow. The cartilage in their head is yellow. The spleens are swollen and enlarged, and their livers are spotted. And in some cases, their eggs, their eyes were bugged out. And uh, the First Nation, now that's what the Indians like to call themselves. They have fishing rights for salmon on the Columbia River, and those are granted to them through the well, because they are a nation within a nation. That is an agreement between them and the United States government. Well, they probably have a right to sue the United States government <laughs> for not make, making the salmon pink. I, you know, I don't know. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is you know this is really scary. And to have a biologist go out and, and in fact, her pictures are up on YouTube. You well, we're now seeing the radiation level had dropped for a couple of weeks, but it's now surged back up to four times background from two times background. That just happened. Well, I'm not saying, yeah, I'm not saying that this is Remember, due there, to radiation. A, but well, there, there, we, it, it could be due to pathogens, but the radiation is going to weaken them so they'll get sick. Just like the radiation right now, everyone in the northern hemisphere is suffering from low grade radiation poisoning. It's already been estimated between 20 to 100,000 Americans have already died since the inception two and a half years ago of Fukushima. We know that the mortality rate in intensive care nurseries within six to seven weeks in Pennsylvania went up 42%. And the only variable was Fukushima. So the unborn and the elderly, the weak, the in utero, they are incredibly, ex uh, billions of times more dangerously affected by radiation. Professor McKinney, uh, we uh, tell us an update on what's going on with ISON, with of course the moves by the government to create a false flag climate. I see these, as I say, the smell of 9-11 is all over this, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I smelled this a long time ago. I didn't quite know how they were going to put it together, but it's very clear now. Uh, but uh, in that time frame, the key to, was when I discovered that uh, NERC, uh, false flag, what they call it, an exercise, yeah, uh, yeah, North yeah. American that's a rule. Of, the the cor corollaries of a false flag is it's always number one rule is it always happens during a drill. Number two, we're here to to help you, which is to help you into your mass grave. And number three, it's never done by terrorists. It's always done by the government. Yeah, and so this NERC organization, North American Electric Reliability Corporation. Uh, look that up and and look at what it is. Very, very vague. Uh, very strange where this company came from. Very strange where they get their money from. And uh, very strange that they would be able to uh, set up an international uh, power outage drill and then have all of these people uh, contributing to it, including government agencies like the FBI and Homeland Security, etc. Uh, very, very, very strange. And when you read their, their uh, statement, their mission statement, once again, extremely vague. If When you read what they're supposed to do in this so-called power outage exercise, extremely vague. Uh, they don't. Yeah, say, they're not saying I'm going to do. We're going to do this and that. We're going to quote shut off. Here's a kind of menu, and I'm just 
I don't know yeah. what they're going to do, but I'm going to say many. Number one, we're going to shut off portions of the grid and see if the grid can, quote, heal itself. A power distribution. Yeah, Number two, we're going to do station blackouts of nuclear reactors and see if the if the people on site will be able to turn on the power and prevent the reactor from going critical and losing control of the containment. And number three, we're going to do a trial where we're going to have cyber terrorism attack the power grid and shut down portions of it or nuclear reactor feeder trunk lines and see if the, the workers or the uh, semi-automated system can respond so that it doesn't cause major loss of equipment or material or cause a nuclear critical explosion. This is the stupidest thing I ever heard. We have an ancient system that's not properly put together. We don't have the staff that can handle these kind of contingencies. This is how Chernobyl happened. Uh, you're a scientist. Why would they do this right at a time when there's a likelihood of a CME, which they know can, may not be Earth-directed? As I said before, it's like trying to hit an egg at 100 yards with a shotgun. You're not likely to hit the egg. So why would they say 100% probability of, quote, a CME hitting the Earth causing major damage? Or, or and this is a crazy or, cyber terrorism when we're not at war with Iran or anybody else. Why would we have cyber terrorism? Yeah, I mean, any, any country that would do it, we would immediately identify it, and we nuke the hell out of them. It's an act of war. If Iran did it, we'd have bombs dropping on Tehran in 30 minutes. So the idea that any nation is stupid enough to do cyber terrorism in America, like Tianjin, China, Blue Army, and they're going to get away with it without being annihilated, that's craziest thoughts I ever heard. Well, the, the question is, when they talked about cyber terrorism, they didn't say what it was going to be directed at. Uh, what I read was that, yeah, the one was coinciding with the power outage, but it could be, and what I'm expecting, is a banking, uh, directed at banking. Exactly, yeah. Well, they've already had those things. In fact, Adobe just told a notice yesterday, there been other, quote, probing things. We know that the, um, the power grid has been reached into, but you're right. All you have to do is get into e-commerce, and that's enough to actually shut down a civilization, is mess with email lists or electronic funds transfer or the use of credit cards. That could really be pretty bad. Yeah, well, there's, uh, I, I found an interesting thing here recently is that uh, when the government was shut down, some very strange things happened. Uh, for example, some IRS programs kicked in that started levying people, people's banks account, and wiped them all down to zero uh, across the country. And uh, when the people, uh, accountants or whoever, I got this from people who are accountants, and... Uh, that had this happen to many of their clients. When they called the government, there was nobody there to answer because the government was shut down. And so anyway, uh, people don't understand how tenuous their, uh, their cyber life is. And now with e-billing, e-commerce, e-banking, everything is in e-form, most people don't have a shred of statement verifying what their balances are, but their uh, payment activity has been, uh, their house payments, uh, and, and of course, And basically, cyber identity theft is all over the place. What the government wants is even more of this that makes us more vulnerable and more accountable to an electronic bankster total control. Uh, they want to have biometrics so you have to lean forward and put your eyeball on, the, on an iris scanner or your 10 digital fingerprints and take a biometric picture of your face to turn on your computer. That's what their plan is. Welcome back, and um, uh, Anne, I'd like you to give your comment on what you think is going to happen with beta coronavirus now that the Hodge is over yesterday. When you combine this with Professor McKinney's, you know, like a bloodhound scientist, he's tracked this down. John Moore, we're all in agreement that we feel, like I call my spidey senses telling me, that when they think this is all over with the financial issues, even Russia and and China and everybody, we're still on the precipice of an attack on Iran by the crazy nation of Israel. We're still, uh, now the Obama now thinks he's winning, so he's now in a big push for amnesty. Rather than just kind of streamlining the, the regular process for people becoming Americans and hiring more staff, he wants to have people jump the line and not even become integrated Americans that learn the Constitution or speaking English. This is craziness, but yet this dictator is a proxy for the bankers is in a desperate grab to become the next American emperor, the first American emperor, because they want to make the Congress and the Senate vestigial. So your comments, uh, John, and just jump in, and what you'd like to say about this, because I think that 
uh, especially when we're pushing this back to January, this is not a cure at all. This is like taking somebody uh, off a ventilator for 20 minutes to see if they're going to be able to breathe on their own and you realize they're turning blue. You need to put oxygen back on and put them on the ventilator. This is not going to work, is it? Go ahead, Ann. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, they, they had said that they had, uh, there hadn't been any more cases of the MERS, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, since uh, September 26th. However, this week they reported two more fatal cases, and these were primary cases. Now, you understand that primary cases uh, are almost 100% fatal. So. Yeah, and by the way, these uh, cases showed up in Qatar where there was no evidence that the person that got it traveled. And uh, if, if it's not a primary case, then altogether, the, if you average out um, the mortality rate, it's about 50%. Now, what they think is that um, bat hosts, uh, that the current MERS virus, coronavirus, uh, co-evolved with bat hosts for an extended time period. And so there's two or three variations of this uh, MERS, of this Middle East Respiratory um, Syndrome. They still don't know what the host is, and uh, they still don't know how it's transferred into the human body, and they still don't know what the incubation period is. But the calculation that is based upon the cluster size indicates that uh, the base reproduction rate has now reached a, has reached one. And at 1.2, they would call it an epidemic. And at that point, there would be, uh, there w the cluster size then would go to infinity. In other words, it would, it would be an epidemic. Right, well, if you look you know, at the actual hotspots on the international map, which Henry Neidman has a link from Lacrombonomics, the MERS coronavirus cases and sequences, you can see yeah. hotspots now in the United Kingdom, in a Germany, in a, in a, in France, uh, in uh, northern Italy, you see it in Tunisia now. You see it in Morocco. You see them showing up in in uh, uh, Israel, in uh, well, those Jerusalem. Are, those are, yeah, those are clusters. The only yeah. new cases that are happening are happening in Saudi Arabia. Right, but no, the, the new one yeah, you, that Henry Nyman reported last night was in Qatar. Well, I don't know where that information came from. My, that's, my information uh, yeah, that's actually, comes from epidemiologists. Yeah, actually, the one that uh, I can actually, I have it actually opened here so I can tell you. Uh, this one was reported, Cutter Murray's, it was Recombinomics uh, Comment 915, October 17th. The Supreme September Council of 17th. Health said that the new patient of age 61 years old and suffering from chronic diseases did not travel outside the country in two weeks prior to his injury. Uh, as he did not, and what it was not in touch with, uh, I can't pronounce it, Basma, Basma, and the council was announced uh, was announced on the seventh of September. So um, the translation described in the new MERS COV confirmed case, sixty one M in Qatar. The case follows a cluster confirmed last week, which linked to travel to Medina by the case. In other words, we're going to have an explosion starting today because this is the day after the, the Hajj. Uh, that 2 million plus people are going to travel from Saudi Arabia carrying this virus. It's my estimation from the reports I've read that the incubation is probably a week to 10 days or longer. It's a long incubation. If it's in your upper respiratory tract, it usually is like a flu. If it goes to your lower respiratory tract, your chances of survival are about 10%. Uh, it yeah, kills you or puts you on dialysis and you may end up in heart-lung bypass or ECMO machine. If you do survive, you will have a very high likelihood of being ventilator dependent in congestive heart failure and require um, you know, intubation and uh, dialysis for the rest of your very short days. Yeah, well, they, they're they linking it to the DPP-4 uh, cell surface receptor. And um, so if you're, they'd use the uh, DPP-4 uh, surface cell receptor in treating type 2 diabetes. So there are medicines, there's about a half dozen medicines that, that people can take in here in the United States. I don't know if they're b being treated with, with that over in other countries. Well, the um, thing is you can block the receptor, by the way, with two things that we know right off the top. Firstly, actually three. The first is the anhydrous catechin in neutral defense. That's the most powerful. Second is my cell D3, 50,000 units to 100,000 units a day for the acute exposure. And the third is high dose power C, mixed mineral ascorbate, 60 to 100 grams a day equivalent. And those three things yeah, will block the receptor. They'll block the receptors immediately, instantly. And 
We have silver 100, the only ionic silver in a complex. We have the Tesla activated uh, neutriodine. We have Allison Med, my latest advanced Allison, which I designed from a source in Germany. And we have immunoglobulins too that help we'll fight the infection. So there's no excuse for anybody to quote, take a vaccine that they say will work, which it won't, because the virus is gonna continue to modify even if it was possible to make one. And number two, the virus has got a long incubation period, so most people get mild infections. And the serious ones, you can't predict that they have pre-existing conditions because just like H1N1 in 2009, there's a high likelihood we're going to get a lot of people with no pre-existing conditions that are going to die from this. Well, that's right. We have not been exposed to this coronavirus before, and so we have no immunity to it. Uh, Dr. Bill, on your website, have you have you put those names down as a possible MERS um, treatment? We are. We it's on the. Um, you know, it's, it's basically the uh, first line defense kit. Yeah. <clears throat> yes, it is. Yeah. So, um, is, John, when you look at all is, these things, I, I see an extremely high likelihood between now and the spring of an airborne plague. And even if the virus doesn't kind of explode right away, we now know from the genetics that multiple viruses with different genes for the coronavirus are present in the same host. It's going to embed and get increasingly able to replicate and to travel between people. And we have the H7N9. All it needs to do is jump across the Pacific and boom, we have a, a pandemic. Well, I think we are sitting on the... About. Yeah, I we also have the about. reports that this this flu also, by the way, by the public health reports from the CDC, etc., this is the worst flu season just for H3N2V in 10 years. Uh, right. Okay. Well, I did want to talk about the H7N9. We have an alarming report out of ProMed, and uh, they thought that they had stopped people catching H7 and 9 because they had closed the, the live poultry markets. However, we now have a critical a person, a 35-year-old man, a young man, who has tested positive for H7 and 9, and he is in critical condition. And uh, <clears throat> this is a very alarming uh, report because this new case uh, might be the harbinger of a new outbreak. <clears throat> exactly. All you need is one individual like this. Because if he spreads it, say, to four or six people, before you know it, you now have a virus that can attach the receptor binding domain very quickly, you know that the government needs plausible deniability to declare martial law. Uh, a run at the banks, uh, a, b a barn market blowout. I don't think that, that when I see these reports in the history of what Japan and China are saying right now with uh, Abe and the Chinese government, uh, it appears to me that they don't think that by any means this is over. No, and not only that, now they have tied, tied this virus, this coronavirus, to a, uh, H7N15. And they said they've never seen that, and they've never seen the H7N7 before, and they're tying it to that. Well, I have a source from a Chinese virologist, one from Colorado, and one inside DHS. All three said this is a bioweapon, H7N9. Welcome back. Uh, Professor McKinney, on the break, you mentioned a couple of very important points. Can you repeat those in the dialogue with John and Ann? Because I think it's important what you just said. People need to start putting the science together with the geopolitics and the apocalyptic issues that are going on. The globalists, basically, their view is that they can only stay rich if they kill most of us off, that the world is not sustainable. But that's why I see the book Earth and Balance by Igor, I call him Al Gore, the almost president. His whole idea the, from the World Watch Institute, the Agenda 21, the Georgia Guidestones, is that they need to kill 85 to 90 percent of the population to, to save the super wealthy to get advanced life extension right. technology to maintain the planet so it's still livable and to kill off most of us because we're considered now a pathogen on the planet. And this is basically a wrong-headed theory based on incorrect idea of energy, the lack of pollution that could sustain a planet and where the fact is we can become stewards like the Nawapa project. Uh, tell us your analysis because this is very important to people grasp. They're attacking you directly as the main attacker, not just over trying to get martial law, but because you talk about literally limitless energy outside the earth. Well, I talk about limitless energy because I've defined where it comes from. It comes from the electrical energy that comes off the sun, something that NASA emphatically denies in their Tier 2 science. But with that energy, third world countries can clean water, they can grow food, 
and grow the basis for a sustainable society with that, they would start to reduce their populations naturally, hold them at bay, and bring up the quality of life. And, and you know, let's face it, you don't need a job pushing paper and sitting in a typewriter all day to, co- to have a, a good lifestyle. And that's a myth exactly. that has been propagated in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, you need food, you need water, a roof over your head, and then you the, the thing that's been lost in Western society is just sitting down and communicating, visiting with your family. Totally, exactly. totally lost. You know, uh, exactly. In other words, if you look at more uh, primitive cultures, they didn't work our hours and they had a decent life. They were able to have family and community life. They were able to grow food, live in a non-polluted environment, didn't have to travel for hours to their place of work, didn't have to, to breathe in pollutants or drink it. Uh, you know, if you actually look at the standard of, of life of most people in the world, it's not very good. I saw a report that they say there's 30 million slaves. Uh, I beg to differ. In China alone, there's 250 million slaves that live in slave camps uh, that are migratory all across China just in one country. That doesn't include all the other countries like India, which has, they say, at least 14 million slaves. And Mauritania has the highest percentage, which is 5% of their population. The fact is it's much, much higher than that. Yeah, well, it depends on what you call a slave. I would call the majority of people in the United States slaves. They're mental slaves. To, to something listening to the evening news. You know, the biggest issue on the evening news is the jobless rate or Obamacare, how much it's going to cost you. And the end result is none of this is going to produce a better standard of life. You know, the people are driving up and down the road, uh, burning up a, a $60,000 SUV and, and putting $20,000 of gas to it a year so they can drive to a job so they can pay interest on an overpriced house, <laughs> you know. This is not the, you know, this is the American nightmare. And yeah, it is. It's the, not the American those, dream anymore. That's right. <laughs> those are the people that are employed, you know, for the rest of the people. But I said on the break that we went from a country of 287 million people 10 years ago to a country of 350 million people now. We are on the cusp of growing into a country with a billion people. You know, well, you hear Obama, he now he thinks he's won this war. He's now pushing, he says, Dems push to take up amnesty, say Bonner will cave. And you see Obama, he's like, this guy is like, it's like, yeah, I won. Now I'm going to shove in 50 million more people or 100 million more. And, of course, the country will collapse. And he's talking also, they put in a, a resolution to, to read, Harry Reid, in the Senate, in an executive order by Obama, that if there's, quote, climate change or if there's economic chaos in Muslim countries, they get a first on the list to come into America. Right now, it's just European countries. What they want to do is they want to flood the country with people who will not become Americans, will retain their Muslim or their foreign culture, and they will destroy and balkanize America into little tiny fragments. Yeah. The other thing about, I wanted to mention, I mentioned this on John Moore's show the other morning, uh, is that the chip in the now in debit and credit cards in foreign countries is pretty much universal. The United States is the only country that has not been chipped with an RFID chip in their debit and credit card. And so the card readers, and this is something that just has happened within the last couple weeks, is American credit cards and debit cards no longer work in many foreign countries, and they're starting to get in. Walmart has been spearheading this, uh, and they're one of the, uh, being an international corporation. Uh, and the debit cards and credit cards of other countries don't work in the United States. So you see where this is going. They yeah, and of course, to- let, let me give a bit, a bit of the uh, document that I received. It's over 700 pages from Lockheed Martin Technician about the Virtual World Project. They want to have this so that they can track you down to one cubic meter. It doesn't have to be under your skin. It could be in a credit card or an iPhone. But they want to track you so that at any one time, they can know where you are. All your money is electronic divots in their supercomputer system. Everything has to have biometric validation of even logging on to the Internet or certain websites. This is where it's all going. And they've already done it in the third world. Now they want to do it to Americans so that you'll have a tracker chip in your card. And unless it's in a Faraday cage or a shielded envelope in your wallet, you're going to be tracked and traced down to one cubic meter everywhere you go. With smart dust on the roadways and the doorways to cell phone towers to all kinds of Wi-Fi networks tracking you to a cubic meter everywhere you are. Yeah, exactly. And everything you do, everything you buy. uh, And uh, the the whole issue is that 
ultimate control. These are psycho people running this entire thing. And what I always criticize are the scientists, the scientists who produced this technology and then let it go and be operated, uh, lost control of it because they never had control of the technology they were developing, and then let it go up the ladder to the New World Order to run and operate uh, and then control the public. So the, at the root of all of this are the scientists, the scientists who uh, uh, located the world water resources and turned that over to the New World Order so they can control it uh, in the United Nations. Uh, the also the uh, you know the the bio generation of food that was done by corporations you know Monsanto's the, the Cargills etc to uh, control food on a worldwide scale in a, from a laboratory you know the insanity that's going on right now uh, is beyond control and then uh, you look at science real science uh, the tier two science the garbage science is being dumped on the public. I always say that this is the key. Uh, in my book, The Diamond Principle, I talk about this, that the key to all of this is the public being very stupid about science. You cannot um, have a, an educated public and have the New World Order pull off what they're doing. You have to keep them rock stupid, and thus all of the tier two science and NASA. Yeah, I had a, a contact uh, by numerous emails from tell me about a Dr. Bill Weld, who's supposedly in renal failure, who's a lawyer and an orthopedic surgeon that had something about nanotechnology that's infected everybody through the water supply. And then they start telling me what this thing could do. I said, this is total hogwash. This is not science. This is scantastic. And it's the same thing as the, it, I'm talking about whether it's Planet X or the danger of comets or the fact that there's free energy like Tesla talked about and you've talked about in your books. There's limitless energy out there. We have fusion technology. The actual reaction that occurs in the sun generates helium-3, and it crystallizes on the moon, which is 500,000 times higher concentration than the Earth because of NL and radiation belts, three belts, blocks those radiation, those particles of helium-3 from getting to the Earth, the planet, but they land on the moon. The fact is we have all kinds of tier one science that could solve virtually every environmental and energy issue, but it's being purposely suppressed. They've bifurcated society because their plan is to kill most of us and get the life extension technology and the other technologies in the future that doesn't include most of us. Yeah, the, the, the critical time is right now. That's the thing to, the, that I see is important because without uh, pulling the plug on society, on economy, on the, uh, the things that are required, uh, they're losing their grip. They're losing their grip, and it's coming up very quickly. Uh, uh, yeah, and, so and, and, and the charter is going to end up shortly. They want an airborne plague, and they want martial law, but they want to frighten us into accepting it so that we won't resist. They want to force, quote, chipping so they have a friend or foe chip, just like they did in Haiti when that earthquake struck. This is what's coming. And if people think this is just a theory, they're going to be in a state of abject, complete cataplectic shock when these things are all rolled up. We don't have exact dates, but we can read the, as they say, the tea leaves, and we can smell the breath of the dragon. Your comments, John and Ann. Well, Dr. Bill, uh, as always, uh, I'm in agreement with you, and this is Liberty Man signing off. Thanks, John, Ann, and Dr. Or Professor James McKinney has always said, ask better questions and then take action. We'll be back again next week with another amazing lineup. Check your own research out, pray on it, and then do something.